Oh boy, loads of new fragrances on the horizon that I'm discussing with you today. There's several fragrances here that you guys have been asking me about and they're exciting fragrances. So today I'm talking about brand spanking new fragrances, either that have just launched or are launching soon. So find out what they are coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, today I'm talking about new fragrances on the horizon. Some of these uh, have launched. Some of these are making their way out now and I'm excited for a lot of them. You guys have been messaging me and asking me about some of these uh, and one of them actually you guys have messaged me so many times from various different people if I've sampled it, if I've gotten my nose on it and things like that. So yeah, there are some really, really exciting fragrances here that I'm actually excited about. Sounds like you guys are as well. Before I get to the fragrances though, if this is your first time tuning into the channel here and you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do click the subscribe button below and also click that bell so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. Before I get started with the list, which fragrances are you excited about? Soon launching or that just launched now? So let's go ahead and go to the first fragrance that I've received countless messages for. It's from the house of Louis Vuitton. This is Fleur du Desert. So recently I went to the boutique to preview the new, uh, the uh, City of Stars fragrance that is launching on the 31st. I think it would be the day this video is launching. And I've asked them about Fleur du Desert and no word on it. And the thing is, I went and previewed City of Stars. They wouldn't even let me walk out with it. I'd have to go back once again to walk out with that fragrance, to buy it. So it's like, what the heck? And I'm seeing people message me also, look, I just got both of them, City of Stars and Fleur de Desert. So what the heck is going on with San Francisco Louis Vuitton Boutique? Get your act together and let me buy the damn fragrance. But I'm excited for that fragrance. I'm going to get it. It's beachy. I've already smelled it. More beachy than on the beach, which is also part of the same collection from Louis Vuitton. But Fleur de Desert sounds freaking fantastic. It's got notes of oud, ambrette, rose, jasmine, orange blossom, honey, cinnamon, and broxen. The ambrette in this particular fragrance excites me. Absolutely love Ambrette's muskiness. It's fruitiness. It's medicinal touches. It's, you know, a light booziness all thrown in. It's going to be amazing. And then this sounds like an amazing smelling fragrance from looking at it. And it sounds like you guys are excited about this fragrance as well. Also, one more thing to point out, it's got honey. And I'm seeing honey pop up in fragrances quite a bit lately. Is honey having a moment lately? We'll see. But this is one that I'm really, really excited about. Are you excited? Excited about this one. Moving on to Mansara Melody of the Sun. There hasn't been a fragrance from Mansara that I'm quite excited about, but this one sounds really great. All the notes sound great except for when they throw in the lavender. For some reason, this fragrance sounds like it's going to be some kind of a nice fragrance, but when that lavender kind of throws in there, I feel like why bother? Like it, it doesn't make sense to be combined in this particular fragrance. Um, I don't know. They have a fragrance, uh, Mansara has a fragrance called Black Gold, which I like, but it's such an overdose of lavender and I guess I don't care for that lavender in that particular fragrance. It doesn't smell like lavender to me. Uh, it smells very mass market, basic kind of a lavender. But this one, this fragrance, uh, Melody of the Sun, with lemons, tea, amber, grapefruit, pear, blackcurrant, osmanthus, mate, musk, jasmine, lavender, does sound great to me. And hopefully the lavender will not be overwhelming. It, this is going to be more like a citrusy, fruity kind of a thing with musk, because that part sounds great to me. It sounds kind of also tropical, beachy kind of experience, and I'm looking forward to this one. Moving on to a, a small house, Atelier Oblique. I've done a video on this house uh, several months ago. I did it with Dahlia. She came here. We shot a video overview of the entire house. If you haven't caught that video, go catch it. This new fragrance they are uh, having launched soon or launching soon is called April Skies. I think it's launching in April, which is kind of cool to launch a fragrance uh, with the name April in April. But this one seems like uh, it's fresh, woody, and green at the same time. It's got green leaves, lemons, sandalwood, leather, iris, incense, carrot seeds, pear, amber. So it looks like it's going to have some light fruitiness there. Iris and carrot seeds will have some powdery touches, but it's got the green leaves. It's got the lemons. So it's 
with citrusy, fresh green, and then it's got the woods and leather. So it's an interesting combination of notes. I'm curious to smell what this one uh, is all about. I do like their fragrances, uh, and uh, go check out that video if you're curious to learn about this house, because I think they are a great house, great looking, classy looking bottles, presentation is amazing, and uh, definitely I'm looking forward to April Skies. So when I shot my tea fragrances video recently, a lot of you mentioned why did I not feature Gris Charnel in the video? And I'm like, you know, I don't have Gris Charnel. I've since gone to smell it. I knew that there was going to be an x ray version of Gris Charnel coming out as well. And I do enjoy the original. Now I'm looking forward to the x ray version. Hopefully I'll be able to review this particular fragrance and do a comparison and contrast. But Gris Charnel x ray sounds really, really great. Featuring patchouli, vanilla iris, black tea, fig, cardamom, cystus, tonka bean, cedar, and vetiver. I like the combination of tea with figs. There's a fragrance by Parfums of Nikolai or Nikolai Parfumer Crater, they have a fragrance called Fig Tea. And it's a tea kind of a fig experience. So I don't know, does this have a similar notes to the original? I'm not sure, I haven't really dug into the original, but I'm liking the way this particular version sounds and anytime there's an X-ray version of a fragrance, I'm all there, I'm excited about it because it's going to be concentrated, intense experience. So let me know if that one sounds great to you and are you a fan of the original? Are you one of the people that told me to go check it out? Because I, I've enjoyed it, I sampled the original already, didn't pick it up, but hopefully I'll be able to you know, get both and then do a, a comparison video for for you guys. Moving on to Aqua de Parma, they have a fragrance called Colonia Club. Club uh, spelled out with you know dots uh, between the letters. Um, don't they already have a fragrance called Colonia Club without the dots? So maybe this is a, a flanker, I don't know. But this one sounds really great because it's featuring notes of shiso. And shiso is an herb from Japan. J Japanese food uses it. And I've seen it come up in fragrances here and there. It's, I think to me, kind of a combination of mint and some other greens together, which is a kind of a unique smell. And I like it. It sounds aromatic with shiso, lemons, bergamot, rosemary, pink pepper, black pepper, cedar, musk. I like Aqua de Parma fragrances, although they are very kind of light experiences. But this one to me with the shiso sounds quite interesting. Uh, let me know if anyone smelled this one. I've already saw it on the Aqua de Parma website, so obviously it's launched already. So Ormond Jane has two new flankers to their uh, Montebacco fragrances. Montebacco Cuba and Montebacco Ivoire. I'm a fan of Montebacco, although I prefer Tolu a little more, and uh, their Ombre Royal is also a really great fragrance. I'm looking forward to these flankers. I couldn't find the name of a perfumer on this one, uh, but uh, most likely um they're created by Geza Schoen. I think he created the original. But Cuba features tobacco, ambergris, orange, bergamot, mandarin, juniper, tonka, ISOE super, suede, sandalwood. Cuba sounds like it's going to be more fresh. And then Ivoire seems like going to the warm, spicy, amber direction. With, and then Woody as well. With ISOE super, tobacco, ambergris, suede, tonka, tea, musk, patchouli, blackcurrant, and orange. Both of them sound great to me. Although Ivoire sounds a little better because it gets into the warmer, spicier, amberier direction, but then it has the patchouli, I'm sorry, not the patchouli, but it has the black currant, so it has some fruitiness in there thrown in with the ambery and leathery suede uh, touches. So both of them sound really great. I need to pull out Mont Tobacco, and I think it's Mont Tobacco Intenso that I have, and see how that fragrance is, and then uh, visit these two fragrances when they have launched, because I do like the sound of these uh, fragrances. But I have to be honest, Ormond Jane doesn't get a lot of hype in the community. Are you a fan of this brand? Do you like their fragrances? They do have great smelling fragrances, but the brand itself is, um, for me, they seem like lighter experiences, not the beast mode kind of fragrances. And again, you don't need to have beast mode all the time. I do prefer it that way, but there's something elegant and classy about the fragrances with uh, Ormond Jane. Uh, and because they're not so overwhelming, I, I always say that they are very elegant and classy exper wearing experiences, if that makes sense. Let me know if you're a fan of the brand and what fragrances uh, you're a fan of uh, with this particular house of Ormond Jane. So this next collection of fragrances sounds really, really exciting to me. I love this brand, but again, once again, probably even 
more so than uh, Ormond Jane, L'Artisan Parfumer doesn't get a lot of hype in the community. And they do offer some great fragrances, maybe because they're an older house. They've been around since the 70s, one of the earlier or the first niche houses. Uh, but this collection of uh, Le Potager fragrances sounds really, really great. Vegetable inspired fragrances. I love vegetable inspired fragrances. In fact, veget vegetable or vegetal kind of fragrances sounds really, really exciting to me because vegetables do have a smell as well, and I like the way they smell. And obviously, I would, you know, like them in uh, fragrances. So there's five of them in this particular collection. All of them except for one is created by Quinton Biche. Uh, I forgot the name of the woman who created one of them, but um, I'll have to report back on that. But I have the first four I'm going to talk to you about created by Quinton Beach and the last one, I think it's Alexandra Carlin. I could be wrong. But the first one is Erie de Gris. Erie de Gris. So gray, gray iris, iris, peas, bergamot. So peas. Yeah, they have a smell. Is it the experience of peas or is it the smell of peas we're getting it with this particular fragrance? But I like the idea of peas with iris, don't you? I like, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of digging iris lately if you haven't already, uh, you know, experienced this because I, I love the smell of iris and I've just really been infatuated with the smell. It's kind of like a, a, a brand new rediscovery of this note. But moving on to Musk Amarant, once again with Quintan Biche, it's bergamot, beets and musk. So beets have come up in fragrances. There's that fragrance from Comme des Garçons called Rouge. Uh, and then there's also Kyoto from uh, Diptyque. Both feature uh, beets, whereas Diptyque not as prominently as the Rouge from Comme des Garçons. But this Musk Amarant sounds really interesting with the bergamot beets and musk. Sounds like a fresh experience to me. Moving on to Cedrat Ceruse. I think that's how you say it. It's lemon, fennel, and pink pepper. And I like fennel, although I prefer anise or licorice because fennel does have this kind of licorice-y touch to it. Uh, but um, uh, this uh, fennel could be interesting as well. This one features lemon, fennel, pink pepper. So it says cedrat is citrus most likely. That's what they're uh, referring to here. I don't know what cerus means. Ceruse? I, uh, I don't know what that means. But this sounds like a spicy aromatic citrus fragrance. These do seem a little simplistic. I don't know if they're going to come in the eau de toilette or eau de parfum concentration. But from the notes they seem very very simplistic and I'm assuming these are going to come in eau de toilette. I could be wrong though. Moving on to vetiver Carlotte, once again with Quintan Biche or created by Quintan Biche. This is grapefruit, tomato leaf, and vetiver. So interesting, grapefruit and vetiver seems to be coming up quite a bit in fragrances. It seems like it's a given both of them do uh, blend or you know uh, are uh, nicely you know put together. So they kind of uh, complement one another perfectly. There's the grapefruit has its bitter spiciness, z zing to it, the vetiver with its earthy woodiness. So I think they complement one another perfectly. I've never seen it with tomato leaf and I love tomato leaf and fragrances. I like that bitterness. I like that kind of aromatic, uh, you know, greenness uh, and then the earthiness from the tomato leaf note, which I think would be great. This sounds like a great fragrance. Out of all of them, Vetiver Ecarlat sounds the best to me. I just hope it doesn't smell like other Vetiver grapefruit fragrances, because as I said, I've noticed a lot of those. But the tomato leaf looks like it's going to go into a different dire direction. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the vegetable notes in these fragrances are going to be the dominant notes, especially since, well, it doesn't look like they are going to be, because it says Vetiver Ecarlat. Most likely the fragrance is about vetiver, Erie degree. It's most likely about the iris and not the peas. So we shall see. Uh, I, I'm, I'm skeptical about this one, but I'm excited about it. And then the final, the last one, which I didn't write down the perfumer's name, but I think it's Alexandra Carlin. It's Tonka Blanc, Mandarin Orange, Cauliflower, Tonka Beans. Sounds fun, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know much about cauliflower as a f perfume ingredient or note, but I, it's one of my favorite vegetables and I do uh, experience a light essence or smell there. So we'll see how this one is. Tonka beans, cauliflower, mandarin orange. Sounds like a strange combination. Also, one other thing I should say, how come it's not all five by Quinton Biche and four and one uh, by another perfumer? Did uh, they not like 
the you know the the pitch that uh, Quinton Biche created for Tonka Blanc. So they went with another perfume. I don't know how this all works behind the scenes, but this is a great sounding uh, you know collection of fragrances, and I'm excited for it. So then, are you excited for this uh, Le Potager collection of fragrances from L'Artisan Parfumer? Do you like the idea of vegetables and fragrances? Let me know. Put a comment down. Moving on to a house that I haven't spoken about in this or on this channel whatsoever. House of Silla, Siege, or si Silage or Siage has a new fragrance called the Batman Vengeance. So I'm a big Batman fan. It's my favorite, favorite superhero of all time. I'm a DC guy, but the Batman is like the ultimate for me. I've been a fan since I was a little kid, little boy. So I, I don't know anything about House of Siage. They used to sell the fragrances over at Neiman Marcus. They're not even there anymore. But this might be interesting to pick up just for a collector thing. And I think it's a limited edition, so there's not a lot of stock of it out there. I'm curious to buy it, but it is quite pricey. Oak moss, jasmine, cardamom, tonka, cashmere, and amber, patchouli, bergamot. Anybody got their nose on this one yet? Does it sound exciting to you? Is it a bit gimmick? Mickey. I know the House of Sia Siage or Silage did have a Wonder Woman themed fragrance as well. So I don't know how they're doing these collaborations with DC superheroes. Or maybe it's not just DC, it's Marvel too. But I am curious about this, the Batman Vengeance fragrance from House of si Silage. But let me know if you're a fan of this house. I've never really been a big fan of this particular house. I don't, don't like those bottles, the cupcake looking bottles. They just seem too much for me. And also very feminine. But they do have the male bottles as well they're different but you know I never really you know got into this brand so maybe I will with the Batman Vengeance we'll see moving on to Atelier Cologne Bohemian Bohemian Orange Blossom now Atelier Cologne is no longer selling here in the States or they're stopping uh, very very soon they already have a fragrance uh, focused on Neroli Orange Blossom with Grand Neroli, but now they're launching another one kind of sort of similar called Bohemian Orange Blossom. I don't know how we're going to be able to get our hands on this particular fragrance, but it's Orange Blossom, Neroli, and Orange. It sounds fun, sounds fresh. Stay tuned uh, tomorrow for a video on alternatives to uh, Louis Vuitton's Sun Song that I'm putting together. And again, uh, that fragrance is discontinued, but this could have been featured in that video, although I featured Grand Neroli, but this one sounds exciting. Although they do very simplistic citrus fragrances, I do like them for very, very hot days. They're really, really great thirst quenching uh, experiences for when it's hot and sweaty and, you know, kind of icky feeling out there. Moving on to Rocha. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of this house, uh, and I haven't smelled Rocha Lome, but they have a new Rocha Lome Aromatic. Uh, I don't know how good this one's going to be, but I looked up the notes and it sounds exciting to me. Olibanum, Ambroxan, Sandalwood, Patchouli, Geranium, Pineapple, Apple Cedar. Is this an Aventus kind of a fragrance? It doesn't sound like it, although I've seen Pineapple and Apple together in Aventus all the time. But this has very dark, ambery, resinous notes. So... I'm curious to sample this one to see what it's all about. Olibanum is incense pretty much. And then you've got Ambroxan. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Sandalwood? Well, yeah, we'll see. Moving on to Juliet Has a Gun, Magnolia Bliss. This one sounds really fun to me. I absolutely love magnolia as a smell, and I absolutely love the flowers as well. If you've ever walked under a magnolia tree when it's completely bloomed and it's really hot outside, you know the fragrance that comes off of that flower? It's fantastic. There's a white floral slash lemony smell there that I absolutely love about it. So I am looking for, forward to a Magnolia Bliss, not only for the Magnolia, but also for the Mirabelle Plum. I absolutely love Mirabelle Plum. And apparently, I went to their website, Juliet Has a Gun's website, to you know uh, check out this particular fragrance on there. It's already out, it says. And it's a California-inspired fragrance. Hey, gotta love California. But Mirabelle plums i love to eat them and i don't I, there's no place that i know of that sells mirabelle plums but i see them all over you know wherever i go to in california i could see a bunch growing and i do like to pick them and eat them my, myself like that so this fragrance sounds really really fun to me bergamot magnolia mirabelle plum musks i'm all for it and i do like the brand they're fun they're playful they're quirky a little kitschy uh and the fragrances are not too expensive and they're fun to wear, you know? I, I'm game for this one. Mag Magnolia Bliss sounds really, really nice. So there's three new fragrances from the house of Lorga Parfums. If you don't know this house, a niche house, very small niche house. I did a video la late last year on the house. We did a giveaway. There are three new fragrances that are launching from this house. The first one is the one that I'm quite excited about. It's called Moroccan Iris, Oris, Violet, Cherry, Jasmine, Sandalwood, and Cedar. 
sounds fun. The second one and the third one sounds very sweet, both of them. So Lorga Parfum Santal Sugar, Lychee Fruit, Raspberry, Tonka Beans, Coconut, Creme Brulee, Sandalwood Violet. Uh, I have to be honest, this brand has very interesting notes. They don't, it's almost like you don't think the notes are going to work together very well, but they do. Uh, Santal Sugar, uh, you know, sounds really sweet and sugary uh, with the sandalwood. So I like I like the idea of, uh, it could also be cre uh, creamy because it's got the creme brulee note. So the idea sounds great. In addition to that, the coconuts also go creamy. So this like, it's a sugary, creamy experience. It almost sounds like it's going to be a woody gourmand. And then the last fragrance, Nectar Cachet, sounds like it's going to be also very very woody but let me go back to the santal sugar it also seems like it's going to be fruity because there's that lychee fruit and then the raspberry there as well okay so nectar cachet dates honey candied fruits tobacco vanilla leather saffron this one once again honeyed very very honeyed and it does sound sweet dates and honey together is a combination i do see come up quite frequently in fragrances and then of course this one's got the candied fruits as well so this one seems like it's going to be very very sugary uh, and then also um honeyed but it does have the tobacco leather and saffron so that that will make it a little more you know uh, tougher and uh, a little woodier and uh, more uh, adds more depth to the fragrance so all three fragrances sound great to me i'm curious to check them out moving on to orza el legrand they have empire dazond i think that's how you say it indian empire I'm a fan of this house. In fact, I love their little store in Paris. If you ever go to Paris, go to their store. Uh, it's an old perfume house that had folded and they brought back like in the late 2000s, I believe. And it's a great house, great fragrances with my favorite being Sheeper Mousse. But this particular fragrance has a Papanax, Benzoin, Sandalwood, Tolu Balsam, Nag Champa, Heliotrope, and Ginger. Sounds like a very ambery experience with lots of resins. A Papanax is a great, great note. If you don't know Papanax, I think it's a family, like a relative of myrrh. So it's a sweet myrrh kind of a note, which I like in fragrances uh, when it appears in fragrances. So this one sounds really, really nice. I'm looking Looking forward to sampling this uh, new fragrance from Orzai Legrand. Let me know if you're a fan of that house though uh, and what your favorite fragrance is from that house. I'd like to find out. All right, a few more fragrances left. Uh, moving on to Loewe, it's Paula's Ibiza Eclectic. So Paula's Ibiza is one of my favorite fragrances from a few years ago. It's a green beachy fragrance. Uh, very different kind of a beachy fragrance, but now they have Paula's Ibiza Eclectic, which seems to me that this is the real beachy fragrance because that one didn't seem like a beachy fragrance to me because as I said, it's a green kind of a experience for a beachy fragrance. This one, on the other hand, has coconut, jasmine, ylang ylang, orange blossom, vanilla, musk, sandalwood, mandarin, orange. So the ylang ylang adds a kind of a beachy experience to fragrances, also a kind of a tropical experience. The coconut, of course, does too, along with the orange blossom and then the vanilla and musk. I think this one seems like it's going to be the, the real beachy experience because Ibiza is a beachy place, obviously, so um, they're doing a flanker of this one, very different than the previous version. It might kind of smell similar, but then I think this is going to be fairly original. But I'm excited about this because I really do enjoy Ibiza, like Paula's Ibiza, the original, and this one sounds exciting as well. Moving on to Jo Malone, they have a new fragrance called Bitter Mandarin love mandarin fragrances this one uh, seems to be in a kind of a whitish bottle but mandarin orange bergamot pettigran orange amber iris created by michelle almarac who i am a fan of you guys a fan of this perfumer's fragrances he's been around for quite a while he created the fahrenheit he's created a lot of other fragrances since then and then of course he's got parle moi de parfum he creates fragrances for which is owned by his son yeah bitter mandarin sounds great i love citrus fragrances especially when it's really really hot outside and i'm a fan of joe malone not the biggest fan but I, I enjoy their fragrances for their freshness moving on to Azaro the most wanted parfum I never even check checked out the most one wanted should I check out the most wanted parfum or should I go and check out the most wanted first then check out the I think it's the most wanted in Eau de Parfum, and this is the Parfum version, and I like the bottle, but I'm not the biggest fan of the original fragrances uh, wanted, uh, 
whatever whatever those fragrances were called. Um, I'm drawing a blank because uh, I keep forgetting. But this seems to have notes of red ginger, woodsy notes, and bourbon vanilla. It sounds really nice. And that bottle looks very sexy. So, I don't know. Maybe we should uh, I'll definitely check this one out. But let me know if you are a fan of this series. Have you checked out the Most Wanted Eau de Parfum? And are you excited about the Most Wanted Parfum? And then last but not least, we're going to the house of Gucci from their Alchemist Garden collection of fragrances. This is Tears from the Moon and it features uh, floral notes. This is in the white bottle, obviously, and the white bottles seem to be a lot more feminine leaning but more floral notes, I think. Although, you know, the last day of summer and then also the, um, the tiger one are very intense fragrances compared to the iris one and the violet one and the winter spring, uh, which is a mimosa fragrance. This one features white peony, lily of the valley, and something called Stephanotis, which is a type of jasmine. So it's a white floral balm. And obviously it's created by Alberto Morias, who's been creating the entire collection among many other Gucci fragrances. Are you a fan of the Gucci Alchemist Garden collection of fragrances? Let me know if, you've, uh, if you're a fan of it. Uh, I'd like to find out. It's not as interesting to me as the Louis Vuitton uh, collection of fragrances are. And also they're a lot more pricier. So, but I'm, I'm curious to check this one out. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, guys, that's all the fragrances I'm talking about today. A lot of fragrances coming out. In fact, there's a lot more. I had to cut down a bunch of them uh, and perhaps feature them in a, a future video. But there's so much coming out. I would love to get my nose on them uh, and see how these fragrances are. But we'll do it one by one. But let me know what you're excited about. Let me know if you're excited about the fragrances in this list. Is there something else that I missed that's new that I should check out? Uh, put a comment down so I can find out. Either way, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.